Morning everybody, or good afternoon, and welcome to the Wisconsin Bricklayer 500 Regional Competition. We're here with past winner, Jake Brock. How's it going, Jake? Good, guys. How you doing? What's the, uh, what's the feel for this year, my friend? Are we going to take it home? Feeling good. Feeling like I'm going to get both of them. Have you Going seen that? To Vegas craftsmanship would be excellent. Never done it before. All right. All right there's that Ford truck right behind you. You see that? Yeah, I like it. I don't want to put an offer on it. That's got you written all over it, my friend. Sure does. All right. Well, good luck in today's competition. Tyler Bowman. Here we have Tyler Beaumont. How you doing, Tyler? Good, how are you? Welcome to today's competition. Is this your first time, second time? How many times have you been here? My first time. First time, all right. So what do you think? Have you been practicing? No, just going on. Every day on the job, right? Yeah, we're all right, well good luck today. Who's your tender, my friend? Good, Jason. Welcome. So we had a bit of a rain delay today, guys. Everybody at home. Uh, but it let up. So... So we're about to get going here. Why don't we go down to stall one and we'll just start there. All right, stall one, we have Delton Bongo. Delton Bongo and his Mason Tender, Andrew Oliveras. They're with the Bolt Company. Big contractor up here in Wisconsin. Guys, how you doing today? Good. All right, your first time into the competition? Sorry. All right, so have you been practicing at all? Just at work. Just at work every day, right? Right now. Okay, so what's your strategy for today? Stay strong. Stay strong, that's right. All right, well, good luck with the competition. We're going to get going here in a minute. That's our stall one competitors. Here in stall two, we have Roman Grable and Greg Corslin with KMI. Hey, gentlemen, how are you doing today? Good, good. Are we ready to go for the big competition? Oh, yeah. All right. How many times have you been? Three times. Three time competitor. Okay, this is your third time in the regional, yet to win, right? Right. So what's the strategy for today, guys? Yeah. Gotta keep it neat this year. Yeah, I'm, yeah too big of a bet time. That's what's been killing me the last couple of years. Yeah, those deductions will get you every time, right? So lay like you're on a job site and then see how fast you can go, right? Yep. Alright, well good luck today, gentlemen. Okay, in stall six we have Matt Francis and Ben Roche with Myron Construction. I don't know what that was. <laughs> hey guys, how are you doing today? Are we ready for the competition? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what's the strategy, gentlemen? Get him angry. Hopefully, moves faster. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Throw bricks and mud at him until he's ready to go. All right. Your first time here. Second. Second time. How'd you do last time? So you've learned a little bit the first time through. Where are we going today? What's the strategy? So you're not giving it away yet, huh? We'll be back to check on you. Don't worry about it. All right, guys. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Here we are in stall number seven. We have Mason 
Jesse Stirger and his tender Dustin Adelmeyer. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? Ready for the competition today? After that rain delay, have you done your calisthenics? Ready to go? Yeah, we're ready now. All right. How many times have you been out? <laughs> well, you're practicing every day on the job site, right? Yes. All right, so I'll give you a hint. Don't tell the other guys. Lay your leads quick and then fill the line in perfect. You'll be fine. <laughs> All right, guys, good luck. Here we go to stall number eight. Oh, my God, look at this guy. Long time Mason, long time instructor, Mr. Dave Price. Is Mason Tender down on the other end? He's getting everything ready. That's Adam Carpenter with, oh my goodness, first prize masonry, really? Nice. I like it. <laughs> Beautiful. So, Dave, I don't know that you've done this before, have you? Have you competed? You have competed, and you're an instructor. You're a former instructor, right? Yeah. So, that means that you know all the tricks of the trades. So tell us what you're going to do today. What's, what's the strategy? Uh, first of all, I'll try my hardest. Uh, that's nice, though. It's going to be a difficult. Right on. Well, looks like the weather is just starting to cooperate, so we'll get going here in a minute. But good luck, Dave. Good to see you. And our last competitor for today's competition, Mason Nick Dowling and Tender Jacob Dowling with Dowling Construction. How's it going, guys? Pretty good. Are we ready to go? How's that mud? How many times have you competed? This is uh, my third time. Your third time, so you're a veteran of this man. Yeah, so enjoy it. So what's the highest what's the highest place you've taken so far? Uh, I think it was like third. Third place, yeah, okay. Was my first time though. I was fresh, healthy. So first time you got the third, you were fresh. Second time didn't pan out. Third time's the charm? Uh, Alright, so what's the strategy for today? Another guy that's hiding in. All right, we'll be back to check on you. No problem, Jason. Good luck today, okay? All right, folks, just to look at kind of the arena real quick here up in Wisconsin. We're at Fond du Lac Stone, our sponsors of the event. You can see we're actually in a stone quarry. Really cool. If you haven't seen masonry stone manufactured, they actually mine this from the earth, split it. And so that's where we are today. So we're looking to get ready here in the next few minutes. So we'll get them going. Our sponsors, maybe Mike, you want to tell us who our sponsors are? We've got Mike Rolf here today. Yeah, Nick, thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity We'll do a sponsor read and then we'll get this contest going. I got it. Spec Mix. And we've got Jason Beaker here with us too. Ford, Hydro Mobile, Holman Menard, Multi Equip, Stabilia. Bell and Brick Company, Black Ladder, Black King Power Tools, Marshalltown, Pennsylvania, Miami, Prison Corporation, Extreme Manufacturing, Safeway, Gatorback Quarter Boards, Easy Spread, Best Block, and Razor Bags. Well, that's a lot. All and right. And on the regional spot, Champion Brick, Muse Trucking, Mackey Trucking, Bricklayers and Allied Craft Workers, Walsh Masonry, KMI Construction, and Superior Masonry Builders. Uh, thanks to all that helped us out here. Boy, guys, that's a lot of sponsors. That's some big support in Wisconsin and nationally love love for it. the masonry industry. We love it. it. So what do you think, guys? Should we get them going? Let's pay tribute to our country here. Cooper King's going to be singing the national anthem. He took off from a Meyer grade school today, fourth grade, so that he could be here. Help out let's so let's go get that done. Let's, let's go roll. see him. All right, let me get the national anthem going, and then we'll get this contest underway. Uh. 
everyone. That is loud. Please stand, face our flag. Let's pay tribute to our country, singing our national anthem today. Natural Stone Veneers, Bonalax Stone, youngest sales representative, Cooper King, Conquer King, Conquer King. Thank you, You got some juice? We're ready. I'm ready. That was awesome, Tucker. Come here, come here. We've got Tucker and we've got Brett King. Come on, let's have a talk, guys. Hold How on. How are we let me, doing? Let me back up. That was unbelievable. How long have you been singing? Oh, since I was three. Since you were three? Oh, my God. So next Americans Got Talent, American Idol, you're in? No, not even a little bit? Oh, my God, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Great job, you're buddy. the next. You're the next stone salesman. It's coming. Here we go. All right, guys. Okay, we're ready to go. Mixing a little bit of mortar, last minute preparation and getting these guys up and running here. All right, all right, players. We can get everybody to the end of their stalls. We're gonna count this down when you're ready. You need to put your trowels in the air. I'm gonna count it down from five and we're gonna get going. One hour of love, here we go. Faces, get the trowels up. Are you ready? All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's lay some bricks. All right, Mike. The competition's now underway. We're in about an hour and a half, two hour, what are we, two and a half hour delay? About a two hour delay, yeah. Two hour exactly. delay. But you know what? Here for the Spec Mix Brick there, 500. Anything can happen, anything will, but we're gonna get it in, right? Yeah, it's not for the faint of heart, Nick. It's not for the faint of heart. So you've got Mike Rolf here and Nick Blahoviak. Let me see if I can make this happen. Nick Blahoviak here too. Your dueling sponsor, your dueling uh, MCs for today. We're gonna take you, take you through the contest all day long. What do you say, Mike? Why don't we go check it out and see what's happening? Right, I'm gonna grab my, I'll catch up with you. I'm gonna grab my. Great sponsors here today making this happen for everybody. But here we've got the contest just starting. So you can see here in stall one we've got a brick lead going up. Now, interesting to watch how much time these competitors will spend building their leads and how they've oriented the wall to start. So if you look here, this first course is crossing get over to the next competitor you'll notice the first course laying their lead on the other side based on their preference 
for speed. He did not cross his brick. You'll notice that most of these competitors are going to lay relatively short leads. The idea is to not spend all your time building a big lead. Get the brick in the middle of the wall as quick as you can. Some guys might spot and go. Let's see if we can find somebody with a different strategy. We'll take a check in here with Mr. Jake Brock, former winner, two different times to Las Vegas. Jake's looking to build a pretty big wall this year. He's going to start with a pretty big lead, leveling up nice. Make sure that he gets those brick mortar beds set right so that when he runs his line in the middle, he'll keep too height and not get himself an infraction for head joint or bed joint. Now you'll notice that Jake's mason tender has a different kind of strategy on the brick. Notice how Jake spends very little time manipulating his brick because they're set in such a way that he just shuffles them into the wall. Yeah, Nick, look how smooth he is with that trowel, huh? Yeah, this is not Jake's first time. Extension of his arm. And we got lucky today, too, with all the rain. The brick we did cover but uh, these good belden brick here uh, a little bit harder so making sure those brick aren't wet really helps these guys out so they can lay a true brick don't get any tip brick in the wall and here in wisconsin today it's about 48 degrees so we don't have to worry about the mortar setting up too quick on us like we do down south Check in with Nick Miller here real quick. So hey Nick. Hey. So I see you got a strategy there for the brick. What are you doing exactly to help Jake out here? Just setting them up. So turn and turn, rip them in. Setting them up, right? Facing the right way, slam them in there. Get her done. The mason tender is a pretty intricate or important part of the competition. Your mason tender can actually help you pick up several brick. They can work with you as you're laying the wall. They can talk to the mason, but they can't hand any material to the mason. All they can do is manipulate the brick on the mort on the feeder plank of the mortar board and, and the mortar on the mortar boards for that matter. Um, but they are a team. Of course, we have plumb point deduction, so you can see here plumbing the ends of the wall to make sure that when it comes time for judging, you won't get any brick deduction. That could be a 50 brick deduction for the final count. Now, you'll notice here that on this particular wall, this mason's starting out with a stack bond and moving over to a half bond. You might say, boy, it doesn't look that great, or it's not that right, but in the competition itself, we do not count or judge that first course of brick. That's the starter course. Watching Tyler Beaumont and Jason Harding with Walsh Masonry.
You'll notice here that he's raised the mortar boards. Just kind of a preference for the mason, but the less tired your mason gets in this competition, the more he'll be able to do. Of course, for mason wins here, they are a team. They both get to go to Vegas and compete for that nice Ford truck you can see in the background there. So strategy is the key. And keeping yourself from getting fatigued, a couple brick may make the difference at the end. Let's move down the way here. Who do we have installed to? Head down, we're gonna check in with Roman Grable. You can see here, Roman has got a lead built on both sides of the wall, not a real big lead. So, his strategy is to get it up, get my lines pulled, and get to the meat of the wall where I can start making some money. Again, checking his wall for plumb, make sure he doesn't get hit with a deduction. Check in. Let's check in with stall one, Mike. So here we have Delton Bongo and Andrew Oliveros with the Bolt Company working one lead. Take a look at the brick and the way that they're stacking them up in the back. Their team, a little bit different method, spreading the brick apart, not turning them necessarily, but giving them room to go ahead and grab those brick and shuffle them into the wall just a little faster. Of course, here at the competition today, we're mixing that good spec mix mortar. We've got our sales expert from Milwaukee, Richard Stevens, mixing today. That's the reason why he's in sales. We're using that dust shroud. So you can see almost no dust coming out of the bottom of the silo, gravity silo, while Richard mix. Using the long handle, keep yourself away from the mixer. We're gonna go through about Five yards of material today, five yards of mortar for the brick laying, Spikers Bricklayer 500, and then another yard or so for the junior Spikers Bricklayer 500. We've got some apprentices competing today. That's coming right after, or right between this competition and when we announce awards during the judging period. Here we are at Stall number six, Mason, Mack, Frenick, and Ben Rausch with Myron Construction. Just finishing up the lead on this side of the wall. Ten minutes in, fifty minutes to go. So at this point now, there we go. That's teamwork at its finest. Here we've got Mr. Brian Loshing with Myron Construction. Come on over here, Brian. How you doing? Good, how are you? So, you've been a mason foreman up here in Wisconsin forever, now superintendent of masonry. 26 years. 26 years. What do you think today and what do you think of the contest? I think it's very interesting. It's good to see all these 
these guys out here competing against each other, and it, it's good for everybody. That's right, good for the industry. So what do you give your team a chance on here? What do you think? Are you going to be in the money? I definitely think so. Yeah, Matt's one of our better bricklayers. He's, he's fast, quality. You just got to get him mad. Like, like his tender said, you get him mad, and then he goes even faster. So we'll be looking for your tender here to throw a brick at you sooner or later. <laughs> get that taken care of. But so far the strategy here is to get a couple of really nice leads up. Make sure that you keep the work straight in between the lines and once he gets going on that speed side we'll see how fast he can put them in and keep them straight here just in a little while. So here we are at stall number seven, Mason Jesse Sturger, tender Dustin Edelman with C.D. Smith. You see here he's got one lead up, nice. This side of the wall working the other lead, let's come down this way. Different way to place the brick for the Mason. Again, whatever makes them faster, you can see that he's got them actually set in the right orientation. So there they're working a shiner strategy. Make sure that when the mason grabs the brick, and he's laying two at once, all right. Twice as fast with half the effort. Let's get a closer look at this technique. There you go at home, folks. How do you do it faster for the competition? notice these masons going really pretty fast. As a matter of fact, they're going to lay as much brick in an hour as a normally normal mason would lay in about a day. So some of the techniques you see here, they are things that these guys have thought through about how to go a little faster for the contest itself. Uh, you wouldn't see them doing this on a normal job, but again, like I said, these guys are going to lay enough brick in an hour uh, to equal about a normal day's work. So you take any of these guys competing today, you slow them down, get them going about half as fast as they are right now. Masons in the country. We'll move down a stall, we'll check in with Dave Price. Here you can see on Dave's wall, we ran into a bit of an issue here with leveling up the parking lot. Dave went a little higher. So we're gonna see if this worked. Again, we don't count anything below the first course as laid. So Dave's up in the air a little higher. Which means Dave's gonna get a little tireder towards the end, but we'll see. He's got big shoulders on him. We'll see how high he gets. And a bit of a bigger lead on this side.
Yeah, Nick, these guys are having to slow down a little bit. This competition right now, we got a lot of rain in that 11, 11 to 2 o'clock hour, hour or so. Uh, we did our best to keep those brick dry, but you can see they're having to take their time building their leads. Uh, the brick are a little wet, and they're, they're having a little trouble keeping them where they want them. So, but all, all the same stuff that happens on a job site, right? Yeah, it's tough when it rains. Um, brick a little bit harder here, so they tend to swim a little bit in the joint, but they've got them big holes, which helps them. The mortar interlocks in the holes of the brick. That holds everything together nice. Again, the real trick here, you can watch Dave spread mud, is to be able to spread mud evenly and at the right depth so that when you're laying your brick, you don't end up with a bed joint reduction. So the ability of the mason, the skill of the mason, to trowel the mortar is really a big issue, uh, a big skill that's needed here for the competition. Let's check in with our last stall here. So here we're in stall nine with Nick Dowling and Jacob Dowling, Dowling Construction. Where are they out of Mike? Uh, they're out of the Fox Valley, Nick. Fox Valley Masons, here we are. We've got a second lead built, building a bigger lead on this side. Strategy here is a little bit bigger lead on one side. Just get a little of the wall down on the other end here. A little bit smaller lead on the other side. So they're trying to get to the point where they can start laying brick in the wall, get their money brick in. So you can start pointing towards the championship here. Today, our competitors are competing for over total purse, a little over $4,000 worth of goodies out here. The, uh, the first place bricklayer is gonna get, first place bricklayer is gonna get about $600. And the, uh, the craftsman as well is gonna take home that $600. Um, like to keep that prize equal in this competition because we believe that the uh, quality of the project is just as important as how many brick you lay, right? So um, with that, um, the winner's obviously going to get that trip to to, um, to Las Vegas and um, just checked in on our time. We're 20 minutes in, guys, 20 minutes in. That's a big prize pool and the ability to go home seeing you're the best mace in the whole state of Wisconsin, that's a big a big boost to your ego, isn't it, Mike? It's a big deal. And you heard you heard uh, Nick Brock, one of our returning champions from years ago, say he was, he's going for both. He's going for both. So double winner. And see what happens. Well, that's all the money. That takes care of that. Why don't we check in with some of our sponsors? What do you think? Yeah, let's, there. let's take a walk over. Why don't you take a walk? All right. Nick just handed me the the con here, so I'm going to walk on over and see if we can touch base with some of our sponsors who came by today to participate. A lot of them took off because the weather turned so bad for a while. It was really bad downpour for us. Here's Jake Brock in action. You'll notice Jake, his plan, his technique. Take a look down his wall and see what he's really doing here. 
Jake's running in the back course first. So the idea is the overhand side of the wall, one that he's got to lay up over the front wall is harder to do. So he's getting that one in first so you can see the line better. Um, for him, that's going to help him keep that backside straight so he gets less deductions. Now, the problem with that strategy is that you've got to be really good at then coming back on the front side. There's not a lot of room between the whites. So Jake's strategy here is I'm going to get the backside up, at least a few courses first, make sure that I can see it real well, make sure that I'm laying to that line, and I keep myself out of harm's way on the deductions. Again, generally the person that lays the most brick does not win the competition. You've got to lay it. Not only a good brick, not only a lot of brick, but they got to be laid well. So now with that front wall, the, or the course nearest to Jake, not in the way, he can get right into this overhand side and really lay the brick. Of course, that overhand brick laying, you don't see a lot of that anymore today. Uh, most of the time we're just veneering a building, but sometimes you get into a downtown situation, you're doing some rehab, you're putting a building up right next to another building, you'll end up laying everything from the inside out. And Jake here has practiced this technique more than once, I guarantee you. Now you'll notice too that as Jake's putting the head joint on, he's just kind of clipping the head joint. So again, in real construction, if he's building your house or your school, Jake will put a little more, a bit more mortar than that in the head joint. But for the competition, you just got to get a little bit in. So it's really a technique that these guys are using to try to win the contest, make themselves go a little faster. Of course, you have to have full head and bed joints. If not, you're only allowed 20 of those, and then you lose brick from your total brick count, 50 actually. I think here we have a little bit of a Hey everybody. Tom, come on in here. Tom, come on. Nope, come on in by me. What I'm okay. gonna do? I'm gonna do Tom it right now. This is Tom Hale, re, uh, national sales manager, right? For county, county materials. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about county materials and what you guys are, are doing around the state and the nation and all about your support of the industry. Well, county materials is one of the largest suppliers in the state of Wisconsin for masonry products. Uh, we've got four plants in the state of Wisconsin. Great event coming here to help support the masonry industry. Um, introducing our new 32 inch long block here at the, sh at, at the event. It was just kind of neat for everyone to see it. It's a great venue. People can actually come out and see some of the stuff that's going on here. So thanks for the invite. Thanks for supporting it as well. You bet. Proud to have you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, and one more major sponsor here for us, just like County, but this is Joe Beekle with hey, Fond du Lac Stone and Natural Stone Veneers International. Again, thanks for hosting us. Um, tell us a little bit about your company and, and what's going on in your world here. Well, being born and raised in the stone quarry industry, this is just a great venue for us to, you know, bring everybody here on a, you know, a masonry day like today, you know, out in the quarry where, you know, Mother Nature started all this. Um, so yeah, you know, the weather played a little bit of havoc, but uh, we're getting her going and she's drying up now and uh, I, I think we got good spirits. So. You guys are doing a good job, and uh, yeah, we'll get through this and send somebody to Las Vegas. Yep, absolutely. No, we really appreciate your hospitality. You guys have been great, and uh, looking forward to seeing who can pull us off and get the ticket to Vegas, right? Absolutely. We'll see you there. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Thanks Joe. Mike. All right, that was a couple of our sponsors. That was a couple of our sponsors. Um, we'll get another one, another couple of guys here, or gals, um, as we go along. Um, let's get back to some bricklaying action. Check out these walls, they're starting to take shape now. Kind of a cool view for your viewers at home. Well, Tyler Beaumont, first go around here for Spec Mix Bricklayer 500 Regional. He's taking his time. Like I said, bricks are a little wet. These guys are taking their time, making sure that they're uh, laying these brick to the line, making sure their head joints and bed joints are going to be within tolerance. And uh, yeah precision. Mike, come on down here and 
check this out. Tyler Beaumont, Jason Harding right oh, now. Roman, Ga Roman Grable. KMI. These guys right now are in the lead. They're, they're working on their third course already. But they've got both sides filled in. They're, they're double wiping at the same time. It's going back and forth. So in this case, what Roman's doing is he's spreading his mortar all the way down and all the way back. And then he's laying brick down the wall going forward. And then he's going to turn around and come straight back. So brick layer either lays brick working forward or coming backwards. We'll see what he does when he makes the turn. Right now he's working forward. Right now he's going to leave the total brick now. So his strategy is different than Jake's. Breaking the action here, guys. Get my camera to go in the right directions. All right, hey, once again, I want to give, give props to our, our regional sponsors. Without them, this, this little event wouldn't be able to happen. We've got Natural Stone Veneers International, Vondelac Stone, Lakes Brick and Block, Meyer and Construction, County Materials, Land and Stone, RH Equipment Services, Ghanaian Clay Products, United Brick and Fireplace, BW Supply, Milwaukee MCAA, The Brickyard, Lance Construction, Holiday Automotive, Precision Cut Stone, AmeriGlobe, Champion Brick, Muse Trucking, Mackey Trucking, Bricklayers and LA Crafts Workers, Walsh Masonry, KMI Construction, and Superior Masonry Builders. Once again, these guys helped us put all this together. It's, it's a team effort, just like construction, masonry in general. It's a big team effort. You can't do it alone, and without them, it wouldn't be possible. Let's look at some more brick land. We watch a little brick laying here. Let's not forget our national sponsors. IQ Power Tools, Hydra Mobile, Multiquip, uh, supplying us those great mixers here, the best mixer on the planet. Block Ladder, Prism Corporation, Iron Age, they're the work shoes for the working man. Coleman and Bernard, Stabila, Stabila Levels, Belden Brick, Steel, Gatorback Mortar Boards. Let us not forget, of course, Ford trucks. Of course, the winner today is going to take home a brand new Ford in Vegas, only if they win there, too. Well, that's what these guys are competing for, not just a chance to be the best Mason in Wisconsin, but to get themselves down to the world of concrete this year and compete to become the world's best bricklayer, take home that brand new Ford truck. See a mason tender working hard. So 
we talk about spreading mortar and how important it is. Here's your leader right now at the moment in terms of brick count. His strategy is to bring the mortar down the wall, work that back, and then lay your brick down. So the more fluid you are in spreading mortar, the faster this goes. The trick is no wasted time or motion. We're approaching the halfway point of the contest. Two bricks at once. crowd here today all considering the rain sponsors people watching cheering on the fans of course we've got a junior brick lane competition coming up at the conclusion of the specimens brick layer 500 while they're judging hey Nick if you looked at Jake's wall over here his strategy obviously he wasn't willing to talk about what he was gonna do but you Kind of tell right now what he was thinking, huh? Yeah, so Jake's got a brick count in mind on what he's going to get for the contest. He built his leads right to the height, and he knows he can get. He's on a pace now to get that back wall up at a little past the halfway point of the competition. So you get tired while you do this. For Jake, the hardest end here is going to be that overhand wall. He's going to leave himself the easy side for the home stretch. We'll see how it pans out. Seven courses, seven double ice. Put Jake right around 600 brick. Precision to the line right there.
folks. We're gonna pass it over to Mr. Mike Rolfe. Hey guys, so looking, looking at uh, filling a little time here, I want to talk to a gentleman. He's actually an old friend of mine, Mr. Rick Scaife. Uh, Rick, you've been in the industry for a long, long time. Yep. You've been a mason, you've been a contractor, now you're a trainer. Now I'm a trainer. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and how you do it? at Madison College in Madison and I teach at our training center in Chippewa Falls and we've got almost 40 apprentices between the two places and we give them uh, bookwork which is now standardized across North America, the United States and Canada. Um, so if somebody gets transferred and goes to another state, they use the same books. So no matter where you go, it's the same. Usually I do the book work in the morning, in the afternoon we go in the shop and we do uh, different projects. Um, stuff usually that they wouldn't get experience in in the field all the time. So if they don't get asked to make an arch or something like that, then they can, they've had a little bit of experience in it, they can go and lay it out and they know how to do it. So Rick, you're, you've got your union, union instructor. You're working with first, second, and third year apprentices? First, second, and third year apprentices. That's right. And is there a journeyman upgrade training that you do too? And um, OSHA training and all that good stuff too? Uh, my, I do a little bit of the uh, journeyman upgrade. It's mostly Mike Williams that does the journeyman upgrade training. Yep. And uh, all over the state. And we do everything from safety to the new technology like the mule. Yep. We train on that and everything in between. So lots of new stuff going on in masonry and trying to get the next group in and, and ready to go, right? We want to be the best hands in the business. There you go. Well, thanks for stopping by and giving us a little. All right, Mike, we've got 20 minutes to go. All right. Let's check out some of these bricklayers over here on this side. All right, Nick, stall number nine again. We've got Nick Dowling and his son, Jacob Dowling. Starting to take shape now. They're running that dual brick strategy. Spread the mortar down both sides, lay one way, come back, lay the other. Here we are raising the lines, helps him hold his height, a little weight on there, make sure we don't lose the line, spread the mortar down the wall. Of course we have the good spec mix mortar today, spreads like butter. Spreading just one side of the wall down. shot at making sure the backside's lined up. Nothing in the way. Here we got Dan Newens. What's that, Dan? We have 18 minutes left to go. Dan's our main mudslinger here in Wisconsin. Well, him and Richard, but we'll give Dan the credit. Yeah. Dan's one of our chief organizers. Richard! Richard! 
Come on over, say hi. Bring a couple of our main mudslingers here from Wisconsin, and we've got Dan and Richard. Dan Newens, Richard Stevens, our two mudslingers cover the state of Wisconsin. Your mortar experts. They really did a lot of the work organizing the event today, guys. How's it going? What do you think? I think the show's going great. Richard's in charge of all the mixing and, and taking care of, of the masons on the wall, and I've been kind of doing the organizing and keeping track of the, the logistics of everything. The masons are doing awesome. How's, how's your team, Richard? I'm good. We're keeping the mud out, trying to keep up with these guys. They're moving pretty fast, but we're doing our best to keep up with them. Right on. So who's who's going to win today? Dan, your guy, or Richard, one of your customers? Uh, I'm moving for my guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a feeling we all are going to win because uh, these guys are doing a nice job. We have a lot of first-timers here. Um, so it, it's interesting to see the different styles that they're learning and doing and um, there's some good work going in here. So FBC, I think we're going to win. Yeah, so Dan and Richard have been here working in the state as your mortar expert for years and years now. Uh, two of our seasoned veterans and great job organizing the event today and supporting the industry guys. Good work. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Of course, Richard's mixing for us today too. So he, and he's camouflaged, so we can't see him. So that's nice. Back to the bricklaying action. Here we have Dave Price. Moving right down the wall. You see Dave kind of tapping the brick back, moving around just a little bit. There is a head joint tolerance between an eighth of an inch and three quarters. That seems like a lot. It's actually allowed by code. Um, normally on a job site, you'll see these joints between three eighths and five eighths, right in that range. So you'll see when they get to the end, they come back up to their lead. Sometimes you got to adjust the brick because they do not want to get deducted for a head joint or bed joint in fraction. We'll show that later in the judging a little bit. We got 15 minutes to go in the competition. Let's see a little more brick laying down the line here. Back to our friend with a dual brick laying. Got a good wall going here, about three courses in. by laying two bricks at once, what he's doing is he's eliminating, kind of having the mortar become a problem between the brick. So you'll see on some of the other walls where they go up one white and then the other, or specifically when you run the back white up first, you get mortar fins in between the bed joints. If you notice how tight these brick are, and when we're laying a double white wall here, two bricks wide, uh, that can cause you problems if the wall starts bowing out It'll cause your brick to tip, it'll cause things to become unplumbed, and then more deductions. So, interesting strategy. We'll see how it pans out. Of course, it takes a pretty strong hand to do so. And you'll notice he's laying the brick through the cores. The idea here is to waste less motion or use less motion. Tire you out a little less, less turns or less grabbing and pushing towards the wall.
Again, we got a lot of great sponsors out here. We couldn't do it without them. Our national sponsors, IQ Power Tools, great equipment, dustless saws. So if you're building a building right now, facility rules, that kind of a thing, it's unbelievable. You can cut a brick right in the, right in the room of a house, not make any dust. Multi-quip, uh, the guys that make the mortar mixers, they make so much equipment too beyond that. Lights, pumps, concrete pumps, grout pumps for masonry. Uh, great supporters of the SpecMix Bricklayer 500 in the masonry industry for years. Marshalltown Trowel, the trowel of the mason, right? So Marshalltown, some of the best equipment, the best trowels, best hand tools for the mason. Block lotter, block lotter work pants. I see some guys wearing some block lotter stuff here today. Built for construction, their, their clothing. Multi-quip, uh, Hydromobile, elevating efficiency. They're the hydraulic scaffold folks. Stabila, uh, Stabila levels, mason levels. Here we can see the last two brick being laid on the course again. Paying real close attention to making them all fit. It's one of a head joint fraction. Usually get them right there up against that lead. We've got steel. Steel equipment, steel saws. Holman and Bernard. Holman and Bernard, they've got great reinforcing for masonry, cleaners. Air weather barriers. Belden Brick, our, our national brick sponsor. Gatorback mortar boards. Iron Age, they make some shoes for construction. Steel toe, but comfortable. Unbelievable. Super durable. They've got shoes that mortar won't even eat. It's unbelievable. Of course, you've got the Quick Creek companies. Construction products, cements, grouts. Anything that you might need for a job site. And, of course, spec mix. Your brand for masonry mortars and masonry grouts on your job sites. Our host here today, Fond du Lac Stone and Natural Stone Veneers International. We couldn't do it without the help of all these folks. Let's go to the main walls and just walk home. key for these guys is going to be, yep, they're feeling the pressure, they're feeling the time crunch, now's not the time to slip up and put any bad bricks in the wall, or they might get a deduction. It's a big mind game too. Concentration's key. That labor, he's even more important right now. He's watching everything that that mason's doing, making sure he's got enough mud, got enough brick. He's got to check that wall once in a while, see if he sees anything crazy. Help his mason out. Some good looking walls coming up here, guys. Again, while we're watching these guys finish up their walls here, definitely want to thank our regional sponsors here, our local sponsors, Natural Stone Veneers and Final Act Stone. Couldn't do without them. They're creators of beautiful thin veneer and full veneer. Natural Stone. Nobody does it better. Lakes Brick and Block. Polyox donated all these nice. 8-inch CMUs that you're looking at here, fire construction, county materials, land and stone, RH equipment services, RH donated the nice uh, forklift. We couldn't put mortar in the, in the silo today without it. Ghana Clay Products, United Brick and Fireplace, BW Supply, Milwaukee MCA, The Brickyard, Lance Construction Supplies, Holiday Automotive, 
precision cut stone, Ameriglobe, Champion Brick, Muse Trucking, Mackie Trucking, Bricklayers and Allied Crafts Workers, Walsh Masonry, KMI Construction, and Superior Masonry Builders. Got to give a big shout out to all those companies and all those folks for helping us out today. Again, team effort here. We couldn't do it without them. Here we're looking at Jake Brock again. Picking him up and putting him down. Concentrating. Old Nick here, he's shaking up the mud. Watch out, Nick. Gonna get run over, buddy. There's good laborer right there shaking up the mud. Do that technique. Great mason needs a great labor. It's just how it goes. Again, teamwork. Like Jake's trowel, an extension of his arm. Old Nick Miller, the labor over here, is an extension of the team. I just wanted to check this out here. We're down at stall. Where are we? Uh, stall two. Roman, yep, stall two. That's where Roman and Roman is still going strong. That two brick strategy. Check this out. That's been an hour straight of grabbing and setting two bricks just like that. You didn't even see that, Nick. That is pretty cool. Now, I haven't seen anybody do that. I've probably been to over 100 regionals in Vegas 20 times now. I don't know if I've ever seen somebody actually lay brick like that. He's got a pretty good sized wall going here, so we'll see how he's going to those. Well, no, but hopefully he ate his Wheaties this morning. Good job, Roman. Keep it up. Not much time left. Don't leave anything out on the course here. Jason, how's Tyler doing? Doing good. You keeping up? Yeah. Are you keeping up? Yeah, That's keep the big important up, yeah. part, right? Yeah. <laughs> Again, Jason's shaking that mud up. That's fine. Spec mix type N Portland Lime. Doesn't get any better than that, guys. There he is. Yep. Tyler's a pretty smooth character here. If I remember correctly, Tyler's dad was a Mason at one point as well. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, I guess. Same with Jake Brock over here. His brother, his dad, his grandpa, they've all been in the trade. Fast down. Four minutes. Let's get over here and check out the other side here, stall number eight. Sorry, stall number nine with Roman. All right, <laughs> Nick Dowling, I'm struggling. I'm the one that's getting tired out here, and I'm not even laying brick. Silky smooth. Looking good, looking good. Getting to the end here, guys. Forearms are screaming. Looking good. Come on, guys. Keep it up. Keep it up. You notice here, stall number seven, Jesse Steger. He's getting down in the end going to be putting, he's putting a couple courses on, on the front of the wall, on the working side of the wall. It's his strategy to make sure that he's getting as many brick in as he can. The easier side of the wall to lay is the front side. That's what all these guys are used to laying. Uh, not much we're, at about, we're at about two and a half minutes here. Two and a half minutes to go, all right. Two and a half minutes to go. Why don't we get to some of the bigger walls? 
just gonna do a check in on Jake real fast and I'll get Dan over there. All right, sounds good. All right, we're rolling back over. Again, here's Roman, Roman Grable. He's definitely in contention. Got a good looking wall. He's double checking his leads, making sure everything is within the plum tolerances. Doesn't want to get dinged for, for a plum problem. We'll let him get back to work. And here we go. Jake Brock using his nice stabila level, making sure everything's within tolerance. Again, you wouldn't see this kind of kind of technique on a, on a real job site. Two minutes, guys. Some modifications here for the contest. Actually a minute. One minute, 30 seconds. All right, we're getting down a minute, 30, a minute and a half. Coming right down to the end here, Mike. You can see these guys scrambling. Take a look at over here. Really, just in the front side of the wall, just spotting and going. He knows there's not a lot of time left, so he's not wasting his time with the line. He's not doing anything. He just laid a few brickies, a couple extra in, right at the end to hopefully win. Well, hopefully, I see these guys every year. One minute left. One minute to go. The last brick. They're struggling. They're tired. One minute left. They're trying to get a couple more brick in, and this is where mistakes can happen. He's got to slow down a little bit. Concentrate. Got to concentrate. 45 seconds. Thirty seconds. Now oh, here we're sitting down here looking at Jake again. Looks like his strategy worked out. Twenty seconds. 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Drows down. All right, down, gentlemen. Right. Let's give him a big round of applause. All right. Woo All right, these guys are going to take a five minute break right now, and then they're going to be getting back in their stalls. And they're gonna get 20 minutes to strike up the wall, and make it look pretty. There you go, Nick. All right. So right now we're, we're counting the walls, so each wife here uh, from end to end is 40 brick. So a double course here, both sides, that's going to be 80 brick. 80 brick on each side of the wall then for a single course all the way through a double wife. So as we look down this wall here, the first course does not count. So you can see again, we don't count that first course at all. One, two, three, four, four times eight, 320 brick on this wall plus four, 324, and then if I come down to this end, four more. So that's our total count for that wall. Now the wall's gotta finish within two courses of the last full completed double white. So let's look at this wall over here and show you what I mean by that. So down here you can see, we've got the back courses on this wall are up two higher than the front. So the last full completed double white of masonry, both courses across the wall, is two down from this top here. So we're going to count all those brick. Now if this mason had laid one more brick on the top over here, if he had actually physically laid this brick right here with mortar, and that's what it looked like at the end, those top two brick we wouldn't lay. So the idea here is that we don't let somebody just lay on the front side of the wall as fast as it can. Much harder to lay. So you have to finish within two courses of the last completed double white to have them counted in your brick count. Now if for some reason you did lay more, you were three courses above or four or five above that last full completed double white, we just wouldn't count them. So it's just a waste of time. Let's 
see what else we have going here. We've got a pretty good count here about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About seven full courses there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six and a half here, so it's going to depend on on deductions. We got two pretty big walls here. We'll see where that's at. Of course, just because you laid the most brick in this competition does not mean you'll win. And there's a craftsmanship award to get too. So for the craftsmanship, as we get into judging of that here in a little while, uh, the idea is to lay 500 brick with no deductions. That's kind of the premise of the contest: lay at least 500 brick with no deductions. If we have competitors that have done that, um, they'll qualify for the Craftsmanship Award. If we have nobody that's done at least that, then we'll drop down to 400 brick and no deductions, and we'll see if anybody qualifies there. If we have more than one person qualify the Craftsmanship Award, then our panel of judges will vote on what they think is the most sellable wall. Okay. Yeah, I got it. All right, thanks, Nick. Very informative. Checking out that wall there. All right, thanks. All right, guys. Hey, I want to I want to stop and talk to Scott from Stabilo Level. Uh, if I can get our camera to turn here. All right, Scott, Scott Frazier, right? You got it. All right, hey, Scott, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Stabile level and, and why you guys find it important to sponsor this event and be part of it. Well, Stabile, hopefully you know who we are because we're the number one name in levels and we're about working, working hard, making the guys get their jobs done, having them drop levels, picking them up and keep on working. Stabile, you can drop and drop and drop and these brick guys are getting them dirty, messy, covered in concrete, get it clean and get to work. Fast and accurate installations. But we're really glad to be here, besides that commercial I gave you, just to, to sponsor the, the Spec Mix group and, and all of all the great guys that are out there doing the work and we're glad to be a member of the team. Yep, like, like I was talking earlier, teamwork makes this happen. Um, and you know, as we were watching before, watching these guys build their leads, work on plum and level, they're beating the heck out of these levels. Yes. So they need a strong level. They need an accurate level. They need a strong level to stay accurate. Um, and these things, right they're not wood. They don't warp. You don't need to oil them. And when you're done, if you accidentally do that, you just get back to work. <laughs> there you go. There you have it. All right, thanks. Appreciate your time. And thanks for sticking it out. It was a mess here for a while, but we got it in. So yep. thanks Thank a lot. You. Thanks. All right. That's great. Got great, got great sponsors here, which makes us work. We're getting ready to go now, so we can get them. The guys striking here. All right, all right, everybody. Mason's back into your wall, into your stalls. We're gonna get going to striking. All right, I'm gonna count it down. Five, four, three, two, one. Strike them up. All right, so we've got 20 minutes to tool the walls right now. 20 minutes to tool, what they're doing right now is they are cleaning up the walls. They're using their joiners, concave struck joint here. So you can see just like on a job site, if they have any holes like that, you can see they're filling them in. They are tooling the joints. They get to work all the way around the wall now because the back side of the wall here is actually finished. Now the mason tender, now here's the fun part. The mason tender can't actually tool or touch the wall. Well, this is the one chance where the mason tender's at home, all you tenders. You get to help the mason out. You get to watch what he's doing and yell at him a lot. Tell him to fix the holes, get it done. So it is a team. Uh, mason gets to use a joiner, gets to use a brush. That's it. No liquids, no water, no washing. You can't move or adjust the brick. Can't move or adjust the brick. Lucky it's a regional. Um, but the idea here is to, to quickly try to clean up these mortar joints and make it look as close as you can to what you find on an actual job site. It also makes it a lot easier for us to judge when they're done. 
A lot of different techniques for this. Here we see uh, Mason using a barrel joiner. Sit in the head joints first, and he'll come back here, run the beds. Kind of typical. Same thing here, but in this case, our Mason friend has a trowel mortar. That's fine. He can use the trowel to hold mortar. When he gets to a point where he has a bee hole in the wall, what he's going to do is he's going to push the mortar off the trowel and press it into the joint. Almost a tuck pointing method. Let's see if we can find a bee hole. Turns out he did such a good job, he doesn't really need that other trowel. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Nick, that's one clean wall. Yeah, we got a craftsmanship. There we go. See, that's how you do it. He did that just for a few people at home, I think. <laughs> So let's see what we've got going over here. Anybody doing anything different? Another barrel joiner down on this end. And tucking in a head joint. And you want to fill those bee holes. They're allowed 20 bee holes. But the idea here is that we want these walls to look perfect when they're done. Similar to what they would do on a job site or a mason would do on a job site. Only a little faster. Okay, a lot faster. <laughs> now they're going to hit these once and hopefully brush it at the end. Normally on a job site, you hit them, brush it, hit it again. Make those joints real slick. What they're doing here and the reason why you tool a mortar, mortar joint and a brick wall is to seal that joint off. Create a good seal of the mortar back to the masonry unit itself. Keep moisture out of the wall. That's why the head joints are to be full. Full head joint and a well-struck bed joint creates a watertight wall. So that's what we're doing here right now. So we can find a different technique. Just an S joiner here, not a barrel joiner. Barrel joiners are for hacks. There you go. It is okay to hold the mortar again. This is a contest. These guys are going as fast as they can. Um, big wall, a lot of joints to do here. Somebody's going to sleep well tonight. Take a look down the way. Let's check in with Jake. He's working the back side of the wall. On the barrel joiner again, he's going as fast as he can. So the back side of the wall is the hardest one. So you notice a couple of these guys with the bigger walls, they're working the back side first. The reason why they're working the back side of the wall is because that's usually where you can't see what's going on. So generally speaking, there's gonna be more holes in the back side of the wall. Of course, once they get over 20 holes in the wall, it's a hundred brick deduction from your final count. So these guys know. The money's on the line. The trip to Vegas is on the line. They gotta get those bee holes filled in. No voids. here too see how close our mason is to the wall they do that on purpose for the competition because they don't want to be moving the material any further than they have to uh, but makes it a little bit more tricky for tooling the joints because you end up so close to the wall so what constitutes a void Let's take a look at that. Here on this wall, you can see that will be a void if our mason here doesn't come back and fill it in. And he hasn't got to the back side of the wall yet. Generally speaking, if I take their joiner and run it across that bee hole from a half brick in either direction, I'll tool towards that bee hole. And if it doesn't fill in with mortar, there's still a hole there or a void there when we're done. That'll be counted as one void in the project. Now, you see the mortar's kind of pulled away from the head joint here a little bit. If I take an S joiner or a barrel joiner and I go to kind of try to tool that myself, that'll compress back into the brick. That would not be considered a void. They get 20 of them. 
when we go to judge this after they get the tool and minus 100 brick to your final count. Conclusion of the tooling, we're going to start judging and then we go right over to our junior Spec Mix Bricklayer 500. That is a competition for apprentices, so the students right now learning how to be masons. Uh, these today are all working apprentices, so they're actually on job sites. We should have a pretty good contest. Today, I think we have eight or so competitors there, seven, eight, something like that. They're the future of our industry. We're looking forward to that contest. Mike. Rolf. Battery. Got an idea here? It's painful to watch, I know. But people at home can't see this. Sorry, folks, we had to get a charger on our camera here. You'd have missed the best. Okay, now we're running the bed joints here, so this goes a lot faster. Let me see if I can get around them. So here you see, moving quickly now as we finish the bed joints. See there, he sees a little void, and he'll fix it. This is what they do on a job site. We're 10 minutes in, 10 minutes to go, so these guys are all about halfway. As you can see, it's it's a lot of work to do kind of quickly, but it's not impossible to manage. So, again, the idea here is to clean these walls up as best you can and make them look as close to a finished product as you could. These walls will not be comparable to what these guys are doing a normal day work again. Any of these masons, this is one hour. This is normally what a mason is doing a whole day. Um, they're getting it done in an hour here, so... Uh, eight times or seven times faster than what they would normally place these bricks. Slow these guys down just a little bit, and they're unbelievable ways to go faster. Let's check out some of these bigger walls to see if those guys have gassed out yet. There's a big one. John, watch out. Bed joint fast they can. getting back to the striking I'll tell you what when when we changed the rules to start including the striking i thought the 20 minutes was way too much time but i'll tell you what it takes every second for these guys to get those walls done up and uh 
I think this might be the hardest part of the, of the uh, competition. Well, certainly, Mike, they've been laying brick for an hour after they built those starter courses. There isn't much left gas, very much gas left in the tank for these guys. Again, doing a whole day's work here in an hour. So you can see Roman's doing his best with a lot of joints just to get as much of this tool as he can. He'll spend the last couple minutes giving the wall a quick brush. We'll try to catch him doing that here right at the end. You can see how much of a difference it makes to the final appearance of the wall quickly. What do we have for time yet, Mike? We've got eight minutes left. Eight minutes, eight minutes to go. See, Roman's got a ways to go. Here's some voids on this end. He's coming down the wall to fix that as fast as he can right now. On the back side of the wall, you can see he's got the ends cleaned up. Back side of the wall cleaned up pretty good. I'll tell you what, Nick. After all this rain we had today, sun is out. Nice little breeze, beautiful fall, autumn day here in Wisconsin. These guys are just about done. We got about seven minutes left to go. So here we have the tender and the mason looking the wall together, making sure there's no voids. Now watch, sending them back. That's what that's teamwork right there. So your mason tender is an integral part of your team. He's making sure we don't get clipped for deduction here. Give his mason the best chance wins. Of course, your mason wins. You're going to Vegas. Is the mortar actually setting up, Jake? No. No, it's not. You know how to be delicate with delicate conditions. A lot of joints to, to hit here. What do you think, Jake? Burning a little bit? Yep. Sleep well tonight, buddy? <laughs> Check it back on the other side. So here we have Mason brushing the wall, right? As you can see here, nice clean wall. Why do, you, why do you brush the wall? It takes the last little bit off. Five minutes left. Five minutes. Great day. We snuck in in between the rain. Looking wall. Again, our national sponsors Belden Brick Company, Steel. Steel saws, steel equipment. Hey Nick, did you get a did you get a look at the Ford Expedition up on the no, Mike, I don't up know on the we, rocks there? Well, we oh. have seen that. Why don't I mean, we take a look? That's, that's a tough truck right there Speaking to get up of with Ford, boulders. That's a nice looking truck. I don't know how to. Well, you know what? 
Let's see if we can get in there a little bit. Well, speaking of Ford, why don't we go take a look at this Ford truck over here? While we watch the end. Good crowd today, all considering the rain. There's a Ford truck brought by a local Ford dealer today. It's a beautiful truck, two inch lift. A couple minutes to go here, almost done. Preparation to get past any infractions. Judges in here doing a little bit of judging work around the guys. Jake's wall cleaned up pretty nice. Let his first go at it. Well, you folks, you're here cheering on Jake. Jake. Time, not his first time, right? Not his first time, <laughs> not ours either. Yeah, right He's on. Been to every one of these. Yeah, he does a good job, right? Yeah, well, he's he's gonna be in the running. All right. I can see that. <laughs> Let's see how Jake's doing here. No voids. No voids this year, huh? I didn't add voids. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on there, Mike? What do we got going there? You know what? Uh, Jake's toolbox. <coughs> that used no, to be mine. Grandpa's toolbox. Uh, Grandpa's toolbox. That, 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 so Jake? My own toolbox. Jake took your tools? Huh? Jake took your tools? <laughs> no, I got them at home, but I give him the box. <laughs> he wanted a box to go to Vegas, he so I give him to, to Vegas. There it is. <laughs> Jake's old blue toolbox. Yep. With the, with the luggage. Took it from Grandpa on. and left the luggage sticking on it. Okay, we're one minute left here. We're one minute left. And no reveal what's going on. Okay, we're here at Fond du Lac Stone up in their quarry. Beautiful location. There's some stone here. Fond du Lac. 30 seconds left. Who's got the who's got the thing? Rick's got it. Ten. Alright, we're done. That's it. Tools down, guys. Tools down, guys. Good job, everybody. See if we can't uh, get somebody to talk to here. Yeah, why don't you find a couple of guys? Before? Yeah, but go talk to a couple of masons first. Looking around. Looking around and see what they did. How they thought they did. I'll have them slow down. Go down this way. All right, let's go. Uh, we're going to walk through here, try to find some masons and see how they. A little post game interview. Oh, let's go over and talk to Dave right away. Let's go over and talk to Dave. Hang on. Let's flip this around. Dave, come on over here so we're not looking into the sun. Or so, yeah. Oh, there we are. Dave, nice work. Thank you, sir. How do you think you did? Average. Average? <laughs> no, cool. I killed it. You killed it. All right, that's great. No. Uh, challenges out there for you here today? Well, the, the weather. Obvious. Yeah, yeah, the weather. Yeah. You know, cold one time. Wet to the bone, and now <laughs> sweating like a mother. Yep, yep, that's how it goes sometimes, right? Absolutely. Real job site conditions. Absolutely. When it comes to that. Well, hey, the wall looks great. Thanks, Good sir. job.
we'll see how it goes. All right, let's go over and talk to another. Let's go over and talk to somebody else here quick. Maybe we can get Roman. Roman, come on over here. So I check and see how a little post game interview. Well, if we can get this thing to go, there it is. All right, Roman. Hey, the wall looks great. How do you think you did? Well, I think I did. Yeah, pretty good. I yeah. laid a little less than last year, but hopefully I got no deductions this year. There you go. It's good. Good plan to have, right? Yeah. How were those bricks? How were those, how were those Delvin brick? They were fine until it rained, right. and the rain did not help anything at all. No, no. It was an even playing field for everybody, though, right? Right. Yeah. Well, we did our best. We stiffened up the mortar a little bit for you, but yeah, there's only so much we can do. But hey, the wall looks great. Thanks so much for coming out here and giving it a go. Hell of a job. Thank you. All right. Let's see if we can find one other candidate. And maybe we'll go check on Jake Brock real quick. And then we're going to go take a look at our, our apprentices. Hey, Jake, come here quick. Hey, Jake. Let's spin this thing around. All right, come on, come on over here. Let's see if I can get this thing back in action. Come on, there we go. All right, Jake. All right. A couple years ago, <laughs> tough conditions. How do you think you did today? Felt pretty good. I laid a little bit more than last year, so I'm hoping I should make it down to Vegas. If I do, I'm going to practice pretty hard because I know everybody laid some good brick over there last year. Yep. So. Yeah, they certainly did. Hey, there's a lot of guys that did a good job here today. You being one of them again. All looks great. Thanks. Way to go. Great job. Tough conditions, but. Yeah, got through it. This is the first year we've had a little bit of a rainout delay. So yep, exactly. It's a new experience for me too. Well, like we were just—I was just talking to Roman over there. Real job site conditions, right? Yeah. Sometimes this happens. For sure, but on the real job site, the guys would all be gone home. Beer, but <laughs> or to the bar, right? There we go. Good job, man. Good luck. All right. Hey guys, we're gonna go over and uh, we're getting an apprentice competition. About ready to start a junior bricklayer uh, competition with the union apprentices. Uh, first and second year apprentices from around the training centers around the state here in Wisconsin. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to start. We're just going to do a quick introduction with each bricklayer. And uh, all right. Mark Kemp will be proud of you guys today. All right, a little introduction before we get going. Before we get going, let's see if we can get this thing to go. Come on. Oh, hang on. What's your name, sir? Uh, Mitch Keezer. I'm with Cornerstone Construction, and I'm a second year apprentice. Second year apprentice. All right, good luck out there. Sounds good. The handsome boys. What's your name, sir? Hi. Mitchell Selger, uh, second year apprentice. I work for Kowalski Masonry. Good luck. And last, but definitely not least, in our junior bricklayer competition. Uh, Adam Carpenter, second year apprentice with Heinrich Construction. All right, great. Work, out, work this out great for Pete. He's watching. All right, guys. No, okay. just count, let's count them down. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go. Good luck, everybody. All right, so these guys, again, our first and second year union apprentice. And uh, they're doing a junior bricklayer. For those of you unfamiliar with the junior bricklayer, it's uh, very similar to the standard bricklayer, just a smaller wall. Um, these guys are the future of masonry, and uh, we really use this as a workforce development tool, trying to keep these guys excited about the masonry industry. And uh, 
you know what? Everybody likes a good, good competition once in a while. And uh, these guys are kind of the best of the best from the union training centers around the state of Wisconsin. And we're going to see how many brick these guys can lay. And again, the quality standards are going to be similar to our, our regular brick layer competition. Heights, plumb, um, joint thickness, that kind of thing. Um, just a smaller wall and a smaller timeline. We're building it. So... He's uh, laboring for, for Adam here. I think a uh, teacher and student here. My water bucket. If I can figure that out right. Yes. So, we kind of need these guys, the Masons, volunteer to come in and labor for our junior bricklayers. Give them a hand. They, Masons just got done. In here we're gonna, I'm gonna slide over to uh, to the regular bricklayer competition so everybody can kind of take a look at our judges we can go through some of the judging criteria that we're doing and uh, we kind of evaluate that so everybody who's not here can actually see what the judging all goes into judging right So all right, here we've got a couple of our judges checking at plum. So notice, Mike, we start with the we start with the level right at the first course up. So we're not actually checking the plan of the whole. Level. We're only checking where they start, where they actually start the competition. We go up. We're gonna if this level, then we look at the bubble. If it's not. So outside of the lines and one way or the other we're checking he's got to be within a quarter inch plumb of the plane of the wall so what would happen this wall is perfect see the bubbles right between the lines on the vial if it were not we would either put a gauge in a quarter inch gauge at the bottom of the wall to kick the bottom of the level out like this right or we'd stick the gauge at the top of the wall the last full completed double white see that's two brick down three brick down it's right here so if it was out of plane that's how we would actually check now, if we use that gauge either here or here, and the bubble that, if it was outside of the lines, then falls within the line, we're good. No deduction. That's how that criteria works. Let's check another one. So there's nine plumb points that these guys can be checking every wall. There's four on each corner and one in the middle, Mike. Thanks, Nick. Let's check out what these guys are doing here. Heads and beds. Let's check it out, Matt. Let me take a look at these real quick. Okay, Mike. Here it is. For our head joints, we're using the blue tool. Okay, so the head joint's got to be between three quarters of an inch thick and an eighth of an inch. So that means when I go and look at the head joint here, it's got to be at least an eighth of an inch and no more than three quarters. So these guys are spot checking up and down the wall. Whenever they see a brick that is too tight, They'll see if they can force this gauge into the mortar joint. If they can, it's okay. If it looks too big, they'll push this gauge into the mortar joint. Once it's in the, inside that mortar joint, they'll try to turn it. If they can spin it freely, that would qualify as a head joint that's out of spec. That would get circled. You get up to 10 of those, and then it's deduction time. Now the bed joints, that's a different gauge. This bed joint gauge is a quarter inch on the small side and five eighths on the big. So that's for the bed joint itself. So they're checking along these bed joints to make sure that it is at least a quarter inch thick. If it looks tight, they'll try to push this tool into the joint. If they can't get it in, that would count as a deduction. If it looks big, they're gonna take the big end of the tool and press it into the mortar joint. Once it's all the way in, they'll try to spin it. If they can spin it freely, that'll mean that mortar joint's too big. 
Now, every time they find a bed joint that's too big, they're gonna take in their chalk and draw an arrow on the wall to that bed joint. Once you find a bed joint deduction on either side of the wall, just one spot, that whole bed joint counts as out. They get 10 of those. Once they're done, they can't get any more deductions. All right, we'll let you guys get back at it. All right, Good luck. Thanks. Make us proud. Yeah, and each, each bed joint that's out, that's 25 brick away from their final count. Each head joint, 25 brick up to 10. So they can lose a total of 500 brick between their beds and their head joints, Mike, from their final count. So you can't just lay a bunch of brick. You have to be within the tolerances of the competition. That's significant, Nick. If you lose. Now, these gentlemen are checking for voids. So why don't we take a look at that criteria quick, Mike. Come on over here. Okay, so what the Mason, what these, what these judges are doing is they're looking for a void in the wall. This wall looks pretty good, but if there was a void on the head joint, they're going to try to fill it in with their tool. If they can, with the mortar that's there, that doesn't count as a head jump. But when they get done hitting this down and up, if there's still a void left in the wall, that would count as one void deduction point. For the bed, same situation. If we found a spot in the wall right here where there's a void, they take this joint and they pull mortar to it in each direction. Half brick to your way. If they can fill that joint with the mortar that's there, it would not count. But when they're done doing that, it's still a void. It counts as a void. You get up to 20 of those, Mike. Once you hit 20, minus 100 brick from your final count. 100. 100 big brick. Well, going back to our, our joint, our uh, tooling time, more critical that you're after every spot on that wall. Make sure that. Check this one out, Mike. You know what these guys are doing? Are they doing tip brick? Mason's worst fear. Oh, here it is. The alleged speedboat in the wall. Oh, well, you don't want the speedboat, Nick. All right, speedboat so, on the lake. So what these guys Not are doing the right now is they've got a little digital level. It reads how plumb you are in a lineal foot there. So level in a foot. So what they're looking for, the tolerance is you must be within a quarter inch of level in a lineal foot. So they're looking for brick that are tipped in the wall. That gauge then, if we set that back on a brick, on top, you'll see how it reads. In this case, they're an eighth inch off in a foot. They get up to a quarter, so it's got to actually read three eighths to qualify as a deduction. Thanks, That'd Dan. be a brick tipped right in the wall, like this. Or as we affectionately call that a speedboat. So each, each tip brick that they find in that wall is a 25 brick deduction from your final count, Mike. They can get up to 10 of those. That's minus another 250 brick from your final count. You know, Nick, as we go through this, I, you know, I always forget. It is so critical to take your time and for your laborer to be pointing things out. I mean, laborers should be able to see that speedboat going in the wall, shouldn't they? I would hope so. Here's another one your labor should see. This is the face of the brick. This is not the face of the brick. Any questions, Mike? Not for me. It's pretty easy to point we out. We call it a shiner. In this case, not so much a shiner. So if you get one of these in the wall, you lose some more brick. How many brick? It's 50, isn't it, Mike? 50 brick for each one of these laid in the wall. So your mason tender can point these out to you and make sure that you don't get any of these in the wall. Again, no shiners. I didn't see a single shiner in any of these walls today, Mike. Looking good. All right, we're going to head back over by these junior bricklayers to see what's going on. I'm going to jump over here, see if I can track Rick Scaife down again. See what he knows about what's going on here. Hey, Rick, so what are you seeing so far over here? This line is the first year's, and obviously they're not putting quite as much in as the, the second year, guys. So this is, the, this is the first year side over yep. here. For the second year, year, second year side is well over there. Yeah. Looks like their technique is very similar, but maybe just a, a little bit more knowledge and a little bit more tool time. Uh -huh. Honestly, they're they're all doing very well. Um, I would love to have any one of them on my. So how much time do we have left right now? We've got the official timepiece.
days. We are about halfway right now. We're about halfway just, in. Just over half. All right, we're just over 10 minutes here. Just over 10 minutes. And again, so these are his first year guys, and I tell you what, they're still being such a such new reason into this into the trade, you can tell they've got it going on. Trowel is, like I said earlier, just an extension of the hand, right? We'll check out some second here, guys. So, so, so the gentleman we were just looking at over there in stall number four. He's got two courses. First year guy, two courses done. Moving on to his third. We're a full course ahead on the second year side. So you can see the speed and the accuracy is it's just that much better. Every time these guys uh, get on the wall and get some practice in, hone their craft. Any kind of luck, they'll stick with it. It'll be journeyman mason someday. We gotta thank the companies that they work for too. They're bringing, they're bringing the next guys up into the trade. The, uh, the efficiency of having these guys on the wall isn't quite what a full journeyman mason would be, but uh, the contractors are smart enough to realize that without that next generation, you're fighting a losing battle. So the sooner you can bring them in, oh, there's Roman, he's helping them out, helping them out with his joint thickness. Looking good. I guess, like we said earlier, spec makes we're all about workforce development. That's what this competition is all about. Keeping these guys excited, making sure they understand that they're important to the future of masonry. And we're proud as hell to be out here working with them and helping them get get good. And it's great, we still have all these spectators hanging around, watching. Yeah. All right, we're gonna head back over and check out what we've got going with the judging, see how these guys are coming along. Now we've got sprinkles coming. This is outstanding, guys. Wish everyone was here. Instead of being safely behind your computer screen. There's Dan, he's checking, checking the tip brick. You can see our other judge is standing back, trying to spot for Dan, so we can make this go as quick as possible and still be as accurate as possible. Dan's looking hard. He's, he's having a tough time finding a tip brick right now. Oh, there we go. There we go. Possible. No, and that's deceiving. I've done tip brick judging before, and it's really deceiving. You swear something's messed up, and... Go, come over and we're going to talk to our friends, maybe a natural stone veneers, international. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try flipping this around. Maybe we can get, if we can get this in properly or not. Whoa, I, we're all both in there. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. How about that? All right, Brett, we got to talk a little loud just because yeah. uh, it's raining and the wind's blowing. But hey, what do you got going on here? Well, Uh, working together to keep the industry strong. So, uh, we didn't know what to bring to display today, so we showed a big rock and what we can do here at Final X Town. Um, we can, uh, <laughs> we, can, yeah, we, can well, we can we can do everything we run a camera. Exactly, exactly. Here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna do this. Back, here we go. Now, 
Uh oh. You know what? I think we ran out of juice. All right. Hang on. Hang on, folks at home. Sorry, folks. All right. Back at home. All right, Brett. Yeah. So here we are. We're looking at your stone. Yes. And we're looking at a saw blade. That is a massive saw blade. What that the heck? Is, that is one of our smaller ones, actually, that we do fab work with, and we do dimensional patterns and sills and different things. And that's some of the capabilities we have now at Fond du Lac Stone, which we uh, acquired about three years ago. Yep. So we can do large slabs of material, um, saw versions of things, landscape material, thin veneer. So it really added to our other line as well as natural stone veneers. That uh, that piece of stone there has got to be four foot tall, huh? That one there is, I would at least say four foot tall, another four wide. I'm not good at math, but about 160 pounds per cube, so you can figure that out. Well, for you folks at home, <laughs> 160 pounds per cubic foot, and we're looking at about a four foot by four foot chunk of stone. I mean, this is amazing. You look around this quarry, there are chunks of stone as big as trucks. And... Uh, I don't Turn know. Them into building stone. It's amazing. Yep. Cut them down, make them into stone, put them on building, put them on pavers, make people walk on them. Right on. Endless. Endless possibilities here Good. at Fond du Lac Stone. Thanks, Thanks Brett. Everybody. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We're going to head over to our junior bricklayer and finish up. Watch these guys at the end of the competition here and see what's going on. How much time is left, guys? Do you know? Just under three. Just under three minutes. All right. Here we go. See these guys? Now, these guys are taking taking a little more time than our regular bricklayers have. But you know what? That's all right. There's some prizes on the line here. And you know what? They're really going for quality. That's what these guys, they preach quality. Quality, 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 especially, especially when... They're in their first, second, third year. Speed comes. At least that's what these trainers have always told me. The speed comes. First thing you need to learn is how to lay them right. And these age old techniques that these guys are using. The most important one being their eyeballs and their hands. guys are going to be artists. Love it. Just under two minutes, guys. What do you think? How's, how's he looking, Nick? I think he's looking pretty good. I guess he started in uh, April, so... He's, really? He's got a troll in his hand. and So this guy's only been laying bricks since April? Yep. That's fantastic. Good looking so. wall. I like it. Not too bad. Stick with it, man. that technique. Everything looks very similar to what we were watching earlier, guys. Just on the junior 30 level. Seconds. 30 seconds left. guys good job i'm gonna take a two minute break and these guys are gonna strike them up just like we did with the with the big walls 20 minutes can you imagine doing it for a half or for an hour no i know well it helps to breathe you gotta breathe man you gotta breathe right now. did you remind them to breathe <laughs> no i didn't oh come on that's the that's the basics don't forget to breathe don't forget to breathe dave how do you do I think it's spectacular. Is that right? A little protege, right? Yeah, exactly. 
Well, what else would you say? You're the one that taught him. He's got a lot of moves that I didn't have before, so I'm impressed. That's awesome. All right. Yeah, this weather keeps on coming at us. We're uh, gonna make it through just. I think there's some more rain on the way, but these guys are looking a little spent already and only 20 minutes in. It's all right, a little break. They'll make these things all pretty. Strike them up. It's gonna be great. How do you think you did, bud? I don't know, I was going pretty fast, so I'll have to fix it up. Yeah? Yep, yep. It's all right. I saw you working. You got good trowel skills. Nice job, nice job. Thank you. How about you? I think I did good. Just happy to be out here. That's awesome. Well, we're happy to have you. So, whoops. Right. You know, keep, keep you in focus here, bud. Good luck striking them up. All right, let's go back and check on our Bricklayer 500 big, big boys. See how the judging's coming along over here. Looks like we're getting close. Most of the activity is done. Rick, how many walls you guys got left? Double checking. Dotting your eyes, crossing your T's. Hey, Nick. Gary's ready with Construction Robotics. We gotta show everybody that at home, don't we? All right, let's go over by Gary Porter and check out Construction Robotics mule. The, mule. the mule, the block laying machine. Well, we're gonna call it block laying assist. Block laying assist? Assist. We're gonna extend the lives of Masons and make block go down faster. All right. Well, join us while we're finishing up our judging. We're going to go talk to Gary Porter and see what he's got going on. If we can find Gary Porter. All right. All right, look at this contraption, folks at home. This is something. So the little I do know about this, well, you know what? I'm not going to... I'm not even gonna pretend to, to uh, explain what's going on here. Gary, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna flip this around. I know I, I'm not going to, I'm gonna let you talk. We're gonna have to try to get you to talk kind of loud. I, I'm Gary with Construction Robotics. This device we have here today is called the Mule, and the Mule stands for Material Unit Lift Enhancer. I'll tell you what, take my, take my phone, 